we ready? Are we on? Okay, I'm just going to check that's definitely five before we go. Yep, we're on. Fantastic. Coolio, I'm just going to access this and then turn my volume down because there is no way I want to hear my voice <laughs> echoing in the background. So hi everybody and welcome back to Spanish Saturdays, this is lesson two and today we're going to be recapping on what we learnt last week plus also diving in a bit deeper about talking about ourselves. In short, small talk because you know I, I'm here to teach you how to have a conversation in Spanish and of course you're going to need to learn a few of those phrases so you can have a proper conversation. So, but before we get it begin, I'm just going to go through the alphabet with you again because, you know, it's one of those things that does take some time to get the hang of. So I'm just going to go through it very, very quickly with you so that it just gives you a bit of a refresh and a recap over, yeah, pronunciation because it's vital. Excuse me. So, remember it's A, B, C, D. F G H I J K L M N N Y O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z And of course we've got those other sounds which are CH E Y R R Because it's a double R, remember we're, we're tapping with our tongue bit extra rather than ere, ere. so it's got a bit of a difference there as we went through last week and you can catch up on that video I'll stick the link down below or just if you go onto YouTube on my channel that will be there as well so so far we've learnt how to introduce ourselves tell someone our name and to basically end that conversation so you're gonna need to really expand on that a little bit more because you know just saying hey how are you bye you know we need a bit, a bit, bit more in-depth conversation than that um, but of course this was just sort of getting scripts with the basics last week and we'll, we'll expand a little bit more on that this week so we've learned how to say hello hola and then how are you que tal como estas como te llamas what's your name me amo penny mucho gusto I'm pleased to meet you and adios that's what we did last week which of course you can catch up on that video which will be in my group and also on the YouTube channel so what is something that we normally talk about with people we've never really met before you know small talk is a bit you know so it's often like oh okay so what do you do what are your interests where are you from and that's really what I'm going to be expanding on again today and of course as we go on with Spanish Saturdays we will probably expand even more on that but this is one of the most fundamental things we need to get started and to be honest it's always really cool when you can have a little bit of a small talk in another language so yeah we'll explore that today so one that I feel that is most important to talk about is where we're from and the way to ask that question is donde eres which is literally, where are you from? And I've given you a few examples of some countries, but of course, if I haven't mentioned the country that you're from, do feel free to send me a message and I will tell you what that is. Or of course, you can always look it up. Um, but if you do have any trouble pronouncing that, I can teach you how to do that. That wouldn't be a problem at all. So I've just put the most commonly, uh, common used used countries that would probably come up at the moment from uh, the people that I know on Facebook but of course um, you know we've got many more countries across the world obviously I can't put them all on to here because <laughs> we'd be here all day 
So for the United Kingdom, we have Reino Unido, Reino Unido, which is basically coming from like that. Reina is actually the word for qu for queen. Um, so it's almost like the king's United, yeah. So yeah, in, right in the United Kingdom. And then you've got another one that will c probably come up quite a lot is Estados Unidos, which is the United States. Or they will just use E, U for short. France, as they are one of our closest neighbours, just, you know, 22 miles away from us, from, from Kent. Um, Francia. And Italy, Italia. Portugal. It's pretty much the same, but just pronounced slightly different. Portugal. Um, and of course, I've expanded a bit more on the British Isles because I am British. But of course, the British Isles is made up of quite a few countries. So I've also expanded on that as well. So if you want to be a bit more specific, saying what country you're actually from, um, I've listed them here for you. So you've got England, which is Inglaterra. Inglaterra. Remember to double R, that trill sound that you want to use there. Scotland, Escothia, Escothia. Wales, for some reason I love the word for Wales in Spanish. I, I'm never quite sure why, but it just really sounds nice. So Wales comes up as Gales, Gales. Northern Ireland, Irlanda del Norte and of course Ireland or the Republic of Ireland which is South Ireland I suppose you could say uh, Irlanda so you've got Irlanda del Norte which is basically just distinguishing between North and South and obviously Irlanda which is part of the British Isles but they're not part of the UK specifically which is why I've kind of said British Isles rather than United Kingdom countries because some of you of course will come from Ireland as well as Northern Ireland so I want to include that as well. So other places around the world I've given you a few more but of course I, am, I appreciate I'm not going to be able to fit all of them into this video today so we're going to go through a few more videos uh, videos I'm sorry <laughs> a few more countries around the world that you might hear from or hear about when you're learning Spanish or when you're listening or maybe you might hear uh, on different things that you might watch in film or what have you um, it might be s something that you you probably hear quite frequently so Spain is España España Mexico now this one gets me a little bit I must admit Mexico is pronounced as Mexico which doesn't really follow the rules that I taught you last week I must admit but Mexico is more commonly pronounced you can say Mexico but to be honest Mexico is a little bit more accurate and is more um, widely used uh, Venezuela which of course is also part of uh, Latin America Venezuela which is quite a nice one as well to practice your your B and th sounds if you are using the lisp of course but if you're not using the lisp you would say Venezuela Latin America which is the continent of or South America some might know it as Latino America now I should have mentioned this last week but I didn't but you'll see that there is an accent over the E in America and what that basically indicates to you is you need to pronounce that vowel a little bit longer so you'll hear my voice where I say Latino America so, so practice whenever you see an accent especially with Mexico as well so Mexico you want to say that a little bit longer yeah accents are interesting <laughs> I must admit um, so when you do see things like that you need to pronounce that vowel just a little bit longer than the other vowels in that word so Latino America is a good one to practice uh, Poland Polonia Norway Noruega, and Germany which is Alemania which actually comes from the old Latin word okay so another thing 
that is obviously going to be quite important is yeah you can say where you're from but what do you call yourself so if you're from the UK you're British if you're from Spain you're Spanish if you're from France you're French if you're from Italy you're Italian if you're from Mexico you're, you're Mexican if you're from Australia you're Australian so it's all very well and good me telling you the country is you also need to know what people call themselves as well which is quite important and just a little spoiler just to make it that extra harder this does change depending on what gender you are the Spanish are very hot on genders every single word has a gender if feminine or a masculine but also when we're talking about ourselves we also need to use those as well however um, for my audience who don't quite identify with either gender there is something I'm trying to find out at the moment what we do when we don't fit that binary so I will once I find out more information on that obviously I'll expand on it but for, for the sake of the Spanish rules at the moment and how it is I will just carry on and uh, we'll get to that at some point later on so if you're from España you would be either Español or Española so if I was a Spanish female woman I would say soy Española I am Spanish if you're from Italia or Italy you would be either Italiano or Italiana and also take note of this as well these are also the names for the language so if Español is Spanish as well as being a Spanish man um, although you wouldn't say Española, like I speak Española, you would, you would literally just stick to the masculine form. France, Francia is either Frances or Francesa. And you can see there's the accent on there at this time as well. So it's Frances, Francesa. Uh, Germany or Alemania, Aleman, Alemana. Estados Unidos or United States, Americano, Americana. It's quite simple, really. And of course, um, bearing in mind that I am from the UK and many of my people on my friends list on Facebook are from the British Isles themselves, so I've obviously expanded again to tell you if you wanted to say I'm Scottish or I'm Welsh or I'm English or I'm Irish, so on. I'm going to admit one of these I find quite hard to pronounce because um, I did have to find it out because it didn't come up when I was learning Spanish and it was uh, quite an interesting learning curve last night so if you are Scottish or from Escothia you either would be Escothes or Escothesa I'm sorry if you heard that that was my boyfriend I apologise <laughs> Um, if you are from Wales or Gales, you'll either be Gales or Galeta. If you're English, or in my case I am actually English, so I Inglaterra, I'd either be Ingles or Inglesa. So I would say soy Inglesa. I am English. Irlanda del Norte. Now I'm not gonna lie, this really I mean to be honest I think this would be down to you individually if you're from Northern Ireland whether you would say you are Irish or Northern Irish um, I've put in both but I'm not gonna lie it's a hard one to pronounce that one so it's Irlandes which is simply for Irish or Irlandesa which is if you are feminine and Irish and then we have Northern Irish which is Northern Northern yeah, I can't even do it. <laughs> so that's quite a mouthful. And if I'm honest, I'm struggling and I've been speaking Spanish for like 15 years now. And I'm struggling with that. So just to recap, so these are when you're saying, oh, I'm English, I'm Spanish or what, what have you to another person so espanol española italiano italiana francés francesa alemán alemania oh sorry alemana 
Estados Unidos, americano, americana, escocés, escoceta, gales, oh sorry, gales, gales, galesa, inglés, inglesa, irlandés. So we've no, now know how to say where we're from and I suppose what we are, if we're, we're what, what country we identify with. So some other things that come up in small talk is what do you like to do, like hobbies or are there things that you enjoy or you're interested in and there's many ways we can express that. So one way we could say is que haces en tu tiempo libre? What do you do in your free time? So it'll be que haces en tu tiempo libre? And in Spanish, it's expressed a little differently, although translated roughly to I like or something interests me. Now, I'm going to go through this with you because it's a little bit more complicated than how we would say it in, in English. So we would say if one thing that we like, so I don't know, say you like this pen, <laughs> I don't know, you would either say me gusta or me gustan. Now depending on whether that's a single object or a plural object. What that technically means is something is like likeable or something is like pleasing to me rather than say, literally saying I like something. Um, we the actual verb conjugation which of course this is something we're not quite ready for yet but the verb conjugation is actually in relation to the object or the thing that we like and the same applies to when we say something interests me me interesa me interesa um, and me interesan because it, the verb interesa and gusta refer to the, the actual object that we like or thing that we like. So it can be a little bit complex, however, you can see where I've just popped in at the bottom here, te gusta, te gustan, as it's something that you could potentially ask somebody else as well. So you wouldn't change the verb gustar, or which becomes gusta or gustan you would literally change the pronoun from me to you so you would say te gusta so let's say for example me gusta tennis i like tennis i don't actually like tennis but just for the all, pur all, all purposes of this video so like me gusta tennis and then you could say because that's usually just one thing really tennis is like a single Thing, although technically not, but it's a single, you don't like tennises, so me gusta tennis, and then you could say, let's see, what could we do, me gustan gatos, I like cats, for example, if you've noticed that gato is the word for cat, but because there's more, we'd add an S on the end, so it'll be gatos, and because we're using the verb gustar, we would put that in the plural third person, so it would be me gustan gatos. So cats are pleasing to me. It's, it's a very strange way of going around it, but it is, it's just different, that's all. And when again, when we're asking those questions, te gusta tenis? Do you like tenis? Or te gustan gatos? Do you like cats? It's the same sort of principle. Are, do you find, are these things pleasant to you, or are they are these things pleasant to me? That sort of thing. And of course, that does change ever so slightly when we're talking about different people. But for for now, we're just going to stick with me gusta and te gusta because I don't want to complicate things just yet because we're only at the beginning here. So I have listed some hobbies and things to like perhaps but if there are any things that I haven't mentioned in this video today that's fine just let me know and I will if I don't know already I will find out for you how to say what your favorite hobby is I have put some
quite common ones, especially at the moment where we're in quarantine and people are taking up little crafts and hobbies and you know doing more things at the moment creatively. So I thought I'd kind of keep it a little bit with a, fe a theme going on as well. So we've got pintar, which is to paint, coser, which is to sew, tejer, remember the J is a sound, tejer, to knit, cocinar, to cook, I have seen so many of you baking lately and I'm hungry. <laughs> Escribir, to write. Películas, films. Leer, to read. So how would we use t uh, the, the gusta or gustan? What are we going to do? Do you, te gusta pintar? Or te gustan películas? So we've got lots of different ways to say that here. So películas, if you like films, that's a plural. So we're going to use gustan. So me gustan películas. And remember where I, what I just said about accents just a minute ago. The accent here is a slight little... Oh, that's going to look different to you, isn't it? It's a slight little uh, line above the I there, or the E. So I'm going to holds that E sound a little bit longer than the other vowels in the word. So it'd be películas, películas. One way to kind of remember, which is a little bit silly, but I can't really do it at the moment, is to kind of stand up to express those accents. So películas. So, so just to kind of get yourself into the habit of pronouncing the accent at the right part it can be a little bit daunting at first but it, it literally when you see those accents above a vowel it literally means for you to pronounce them a little bit longer than the other vowels in the word so um, for each of these we would say me gusta pintar I like to paint me gusta coser I like to sew me gusta tejer I like to knit me gusta cocinar. I like to cook. Me gusta escribir. I like to write. Me gustan, because we're using a plural word here, películas. Me gustan películas. I like films. And of course, me gusta leer. I like to read. Now, naturally, not everybody is a creative, so I have included some more hobbies to play around with as well. I know some of you are into your sports or other things, so I, I do apologise if I've left any of your favourite hobbies out. So do let me know if you've got any other hobbies that you don't know the Spanish word for, you want to know, or you need help pronouncing it for your practice at home. No problem, just drop me a message, um, either if you're on YouTube, pop a message down below in the comment section, or of course comment on this video now, I'll be more than happy to help you um, with your learning experience and how to express yourself and you know get that great small talk in Spanish. So continuing on with those hobbies, I've got te gusta, te gustan, so you've got deportes, deportes, which is sports which is quite a nice general thing to say but I've also had a few other things added a few other things here as well so we've got esquiar which actually sounds like to ski anyway esquiar it's got that ski sound in there so esquiar to ski correr to run nadar to swim bailar to dance. Little fun fact, if you're a fan of Enrique Iglesias, bailamos literally means we dance um, in in Spanish. So bailamos, does the rhythm take you over bailamos? <laughs> um, that literally means we dance. Um, and if you know much about Spanish and Latin American culture, uh, people love to dance. <laughs> And we've got jardineria, 
Hardineria. No, I've done that wrong. Sorry. Hardineria. Hardineria. Sorry, I apologise for getting that slightly wrong. Hardineria. Gardening. Which is my mum's favourite hobby, just so you know. Uh, me gusta musica. No, it's the accent again. Musica. Almost like mooing, isn't it? But no. Musica. And fotografia. Fotografia. So we've done some hobbies. But this subject sometimes comes up too. And again, it does really depend. Um, some people get offended by talking about their age, but I think it's also vitally important when we're learning a new language that we can at least say that. So Spanish will do something slightly different with age as well, because we they don't really say, I am such and such years old. They actually say, I have so many years. So when we ask the question, how old are you in Spanish? We're literally saying, how many years do you have? Which uh, is quite interesting. So we would say in Spanish, cuánto años tienes? Cuánto años tienes? How old are you? And we would reply with tengo whatever number we like, años. Now, can't really answer that question if I haven't taught you the numbers. So I think that's something important that we're going to need to do before we say how old we are. Because if we don't know the numbers, we can't say how old we are. So we're going to crack on with some numbers, which I'm going to just let you know it's going to be a little bit overwhelming but don't worry it's going to take time to learn and practice and I will be putting some resources into the the group as well so that you can practice in your own time don't panic if this is a bit overwhelming at first it just it takes a long time but of course I need to teach you some numbers so that you can actually say oh I'm however old you are okay so Numbers. So I've got this from Spanish411.net. I think they're really, really good for resources. So I'd really recommend, if you can, uh, check out some of the resources on there. They're really good for like pronunciation, and they just keep it nice and simple, and a little bit more sort of easier to read if you do have any learning difficulties. So we've got quite a lot of numbers to get through, but of course I'm not expecting anyone to be a billion years old here. So, <laughs> but you might be. Um, so we're going to just go through a few of the numbers together today. Um, but we're not going to go through every single one because at the end of the day, that's going to take time. But of course, if you do get stuck on pronunciation of any of these things, then just give me a shout and we can always um, go through that together. So starting from the top left, we've got cero. Or if you're not lisping with your Spanish, cero. But I prefer to lisp, so I apologise, but that's how it's... I'm going to pronounce the lisp, but if you don't want to, again, that's fine. And then let's start from uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve. Nueve. Diez, so we're going in tens now. Diez, once, doce, trece, catorce, quince, dieciséis, dieciocho, diecinueve, veinte. So I'm just going to go from zero to twenty again because it's quite a bit. And of course, I'm not expecting you to remember all of these numbers by the end of this video because, damn, there's a lot of numbers. So I'll go from 0 to 20 again for you guys, and then I will go just for the first few numbers of each, 10s going up. So we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Siete, ocho, nueve, diez, once, doce, trece, catorce, quince, 
F6, F7, F8, F9, 20. Now when the Spanish do the first number after 20 or 30 or 40 and so on, there's always a little bit of a difference. There's, this can get a little bit confusing. So I'm going to just sort of go over a few of them. So as you can probably tell, in the two right hand columns at the top, when you're going from your 20s to your 30s, there's a bit of a difference in how we're pronouncing these. So firstly, 21 would be Bientiuno. So it's literally saying 20 and 1. Bienti dos, bienti tres, bienti cuatro, bienti cinco, bienti seis, bienti siete, bienti ocho, bienti nueve. Now thirties, this is written a little bit different. Because instead of having that word mushed together, we've, we're actually separating that word. So it, that's where it can be a little bit, a bit difficult when you're writing these numbers down or trying to memorise, but it's pretty simple from there onwards as well though. So it's 30 would be 30, and then it would be 30, 30, so 30 y 1, 30 y 2, 30 y 3, 30 y 4, 30 y 5, 30 y 6, 37, just realised I've said that wrong, 36, 37, 38, 39. Now this would be pretty much the same going from 40 upwards. But I'm, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just literally move on to the next 10, um, the tens rather than sort of going every single number up to 100. So for 10 it's 10, 20, 20, have you noticed it sounds a little similar? 30, 30, 40, 40, 50, 50, 60, 60, 70, 70, 80, 80, 90, 90. And then when we get to 100, 100 or 100. And then we've of course got 200, which is 2, 300, 400, and so on. So I would recommend that if you get a little bit bored later on or want some bedtime reading, go over these and practice them and make up some different numbers and just have a little bit of a go at writing some of these numbers down and of course I would probably suggest just for the moment not to worry too much about the thousand because it's where it gets a little complicated but for now just stick to everything up to a hundred if you can just to get a bit of practice um, but we will come back to this a few times so don't worry too much I'm not going to suddenly expect you to know all your numbers by next week it's again we're in quarantine for a while guys I'm not asking you to rush things because it takes time and remember you can always go back over these videos as much as you want and of course of course materials I'll upload as much as I can as well I mean at the end of the day this is not an official course I'm not an official teacher I'm just sharing my knowledge with you guys and hopefully we can all have a bit of fun so don't put too much pressure on yourself so, when we talk about numbers with age, it's pretty self-explanatory. So, for example, me, tengo, which means I have, tengo 20, no, no, no I'm not 20, <laughs> sorry, tengo 32 años. So, I am 32 currently at the time of this video been uh, uploaded but in a few weeks I'll be 33 so I'll be 33 años so let's look at this as an exercise so how old are these people 
dice, María, María tiene 20 años. So, María is something. Yes, right. María tiene 20 años. So, I'll let you have a little think about that. I'm not expecting you to remember all of this, but you can always go back and forth in your own time later and just uh, have a little bit of an exercise for you, really, isn't it? Uh, Miguel, oh sorry, Miguel, Miguel, sorry, you can say Miguel as well, but I like Miguel, sorry. Miguel tiene 32 años. Miguel tiene 32 años. Javier. Tiene ocho años. Javier, Javier tiene ocho años. Carmen tiene cuarenta y seis años. Carmen tienta, tiene, sorry, very sorry about that. Carmen tiene cuarenta y seis años. So let's see how old they are. So, Maria tiene 20 años. Maria is 20 years old. Miguel tiene 32 años. Miguel is 32 years old. Javier tiene 8 años. Javier is 8 years old. Carmen tiene 46 años. Carmen is 46 years old. Did you get them right? Don't worry if you didn't. You can always practice whenever you like with your numbers because at the end of the day practice makes perfect. Keep going over them, give yourself little exercises and of course if you need any help just give us a shout. So let's get a little bit more complicated, sort of, but it's not really, but it's more for your small talk that you can practice at home and again, if I've not listed your job title or your profession, but you want to know, give us a shout and we can sort that out and I can teach you how to pronounce it properly as well. It's not a problem. But I've just put a few down for the moment and then of course we can always expand on that later and there will be some resources on different occupations as well. So another thing that you could ask when you're making small talk with someone for the first time in Spanish is ¿Cuál es tu trabajo? Which is what is your job? Or ¿Cuál es tu trabajo? So here's a few that I've listed. So for teacher, profesor, and I'm sorry I've made a bit of a mistake on that slide. It's actually meant to say profesora. So depending on whether you're male or female, you would either say profesor Profesora. So you would say soy profesor o soy profesora. For student, you would say soy estudiante. Soy estudiante. For lawyer, it's soy abogado. Abogado. For doctor, this one's a little bit interesting because <laughs> you can actually get doctor, but it is more common to see a doctor as médico, médico. A nurse, enfermera, enfermera. I love this word so much for firefighters. I don't know why. I just love it. Firefighter. Yeah, so you would say, sorry, I apologise if. You are saying this as a single person. I apologize. I do need to edit my slides slightly. It is bombero. Bombero or bomberos for plural. And the police, policia, which is one that you might see if you've been to Spain or a Spanish speaking country. You'll probably see that quite a lot, policia. Um, or you might have seen it in films or what have you. And it also looks very much the same as the English word as well. And professor is another word for teacher, like professor. Um, another word for teacher is also maestra or maestro. And it can depend on, I suppose, your preference and also where you're from. 
to whether you would say profesor, maestro, and there's another one like mentor as well. So there's quite a few words for the same sort of thing. Um, I've also put this lovely list of occupations down as well. So as you can see, it says doctor as well. So that is another word we can use for doctor, but I haven't really seen it used very much. You'd mainly see doctor maybe in a book or something, but I've only really seen medico being used like medico. So like I said before, sorry, I do apologize. You can say soy estudiante, soy medico, but you can also, if you want to be a bit more polite and proper, you would say soy un or una, depending on whether you're male or female. So you would say, for example, soy una enfermera. I am a nurse, for example. I'm not a nurse, just for the record. Um, I'm just me. But we have got some other occupations here as well. So dentista, cajero, so like a cashier, albañil, builder, periodista, which is a journalist and just so you know, you might hear this before, might have heard this before. Periodicos is the word that the Spanish would use for like newspaper. Modista. I think that's a tailor. If I'm honest, some of these pictures are a little bit deceiving, I'm not really sure. <laughs> Profesor, profesora. So soy una profesora. Well, at least I'm pretending to be. Uh, cocinero. So if you're a chef or a cook, cocinero or cocinera, mago, which I can now see where the word mage has come from, but we were talking about a magician in this case, banadero or banadera, a baker, cantante, singer, pintor or pintora, Painter. Camarero, camarera, waitress or waiter. Carpintero, carpintera. Well, that sounds very similar to the English there, so carpenter. And this one also sounds quite similar to the English. Actor or actrice, or actriz, sorry. Actor, actriz. Enfermero, enfermera. So they do have a masculine and a feminine form of nurse because this is 2020 and we do have male and female nurses and of all genders. And we've got secretario, secretaria. Very similar to the English again, secretary. Jardinero, jardinera, gardener. Another one that people are probably going to recognize, veterinario, veterinaria. Ejecutivo, ejecutiva, ejecutivo, ejecutivo, ejecutiva. Executive. That's quite a mouthful, that one. Ej, ejecutivo, ejecutivo, ejecutiva. Policía, which we've just been over that already. <laughs> Pintor, pintora. Why is that on there twice? That's interesting. Literally in the same column as well. Pintor, pintora. Well, it's been there twice for some reason. Periquero, periquera. Bailarín, bailarina. Dancer. Granjero, granjera. Farmer. So we're starting to come to the end now. So, so far we have learned in the past couple of weeks, we've learned greetings, saying hello, to goodbye. We've learned a few of the sounds and the alphabet. We've also, today, we've learned some countries, but of course, if there's any countries that you'd like to know the, the actual Spanish word for, just give me a shout. Um, we've learned about 
people in general so hobbies and interests what we like what we don't like you can also actually I didn't even tell you that so if you don't like something you can say no me gusta or no me gusta it's quite simple um, so me gusta me gustan or me interesa that's for our hobbies and interests um, also we've looked at jobs and we've also learned briefly about how to say our age and some numbers there as well so it's just a little bit of the basics for the moment but we've learned how to have our first conversations in Spanish so we can at least tell somebody a little bit about ourselves what we do and what we don't like and what we what we get up to which um, is always important for small talk isn't it um, so here are some exercises which of course you don't have to do in the slightest. I found these online, I think they're really, really helpful, very, very good for if you actually want to print out, excuse me, if you want to print them out and fill them in, that's entirely up to you. But it really isn't um, a big deal if you don't or not, it's just literally just a bit of exercise to help you recap on what we've learned today. Um, so just sort of to go over with the first one on the left, um, match up the Spanish English words, which is quite simple. You've got jugar al fútbol, which sounds pretty similar, so it's to play football. Tocar la batería, to play the drum. Pintar, to paint. Nadar, to swim. Correr, to run. Dibujar, I actually don't know what that is. That's interesting. I don't know what something is there, guys. Oh, no. But it's basically just to kind of match up what, what, what goes with what. Esquiar, to ski. Sacar fotos, to take photos. Pasear a perro, to walk the dog, which I know lots of you have been doing lately. Uh, walking your dog, because that's, at the moment, if you're in the UK, you're allowed out once a day for exercise. Um, but that's pretty much it, or unless you're going to a supermarket, so that's one that you could be saying to your Spanish friends is pasear a perro, that you've been walking your dog, or whatever hobbies that you've been taking up recently, whether they're new or old. Mirar videos, to watch videos. Hager, no, sorry, I beg your pardon, I'm not reading that properly. Hager, hager yoga. <laughs> I don't think that's even the correct word, actually. This is not my worksheet, by the way. Acher yoga. Yeah, yeah, to do yoga. I think it's acher yoga. So I think I might have to tell them off. Uh, montar en bicicleta. Montar en bicicleta. To ride a bike. Cantar en un corro. To sing in a choir. Uh, escuchar música. Which is to listen to music. So you've also got some really handy vocabulary there, so some verbs, because uh, a lot of those are actually verbs that we will come up to later. Um, very much like English, we, we use verbs for describing what we're doing, or actions, and of course they do have a lot of fun conjugations, and that's where it gets complicated. But this isn't something that we're going to be doing for a while yet, because it's yeah it's too it's too hard at the moment for everybody but we can also then use some of those verbs from above to fill out the forms below if you want to you don't have to it's just there just for extra practice if you want to do that although I am going to possibly edit that worksheet because I've got them from one of my resource websites um, if I'm honest there's a couple of mistakes that they've written in there and <laughs> it's really bugging me um, so then the next sheet, which is quite hard for me to see, but you might be able to see it a bit clearer, is Pase Tiempos, uh, so Los Deportes. So different sports um, that you can take part in. And obviously lo lo it, get, it just expands more on sports because you know there's not just one, there's loads, isn't there? There's different footballs, uh, Jurgara Football, but then you've also got Jurgara al Football, uh, Norte Americano, so North American football, which is very different from the football that we would see in Britain, or also known as soccer to some as well. 
Um, then we've got like baseball, baseball, uh, which is very much the same. Jugar juegos, which means literally to play games. Bailar, to dance. Nadar, yeah, nadar. Swim, I can't see all of those. Esquier, jugar a baloncesto. Sorry, I can't read that. Jugar a bol volleyball as well. So yeah, you've got some, you've got some there. But I'm going to upload those in PDF format so that you can actually see them. Because at the moment I cannot see them for love nor money. <laughs> but it's just to show you what there. Th these are some resources that you can sort of do at home between now and next week. And yeah, that's pretty much the end of it today, guys. So I do hope you've enjoyed that. Sorry, it's not been very, um, not quite as smooth as last week but I do apologize for that I'm not feeling very very great today uh, it's just a normal thing for me um, but I do hope that you have enjoyed this video today and learned something if you do have any questions and uh, then do give me a shout feel free to comment below um, I will be uploading this to YouTube again as I did with the previous video and of course on the Facebook group I'll be uploading some of the resources including like some worksheets if you want to practice but again I'm not going to set your homework, I'm not a teacher, I'm not going to chase after you for things like that, it's just if you if you want something to do, because at the end of the day we're all locked down, and yeah, it gets a little bit boring, um, so this is something that I've been enjoying really doing, but it naturally is quite hard as well, planning lessons, because I've never really taught Spanish before, or any, any language for that matter, so it's quite interesting that and I've also done it completely unscripted, hence why I've sort of mumbled all over the place. Um, but it, you know, it's been really, really enjoyable. And again, I just want to sort of shout out to my boyfriend who's actually helped me set this up today because I have no idea how this works. So I do really appreciate him for getting me all set up and running and obviously lending me these headphones so I can actually hear myself. Um, and obviously so that you can hear me clearly as well and putting the slideshow together and everything so it's been all great so t thanks very much if you've been watching today and that is pretty much it from me today guys so I will see you next week uh, hasta la semana próxima um, if you have any questions between now and then just give us a shout and we'll go from there but do give us a like and a thumbs up just to let me know that you have watched this and again you know where I'll be if you have any questions at all. See you soon, guys. Hasta pronto. Adios.